This mower was in my storage for about a year, and I hate to say it, but I forgot to drain any of the fluids in it. Luckily, it didn't leak anything, so I didn't have a mess to deal with, but I have to figure out where I got this thing from, and of course, try and fix it. This brings up an important issue. Devoting time into a project may not be a big deal, but when it comes to investing money in parts, now that could be a deal breaker. In today's project, we look at this Husqvarna mower, and the problem is that I don't know if it runs. I think I found this one on the marketplace on the curb, along with another mower and a lot of other stuff. From the things that were being given away, someone either left town or left town in a permanent way. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them, but if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. Now, the reason I forgot to drain the fluids is sometimes I pick stuff up and I take them straight to the storage without looking them over, which is not a good idea. I should at least drain the fluids out of them so they don't leak anywhere. And the other reason is to prevent a fire hazard at the storage. A third reason is to prevent the fuel system from being destroyed by the gasoline over a long period of time. After looking at the oil, it's at the full mark and a pretty decent color. Now, after removing the fuel cap, I can see there's still fuel in the tank, but it's from last year. However, it doesn't smell that bad, and with the price of gasoline right now, I'm still going to try and use it. We'll drain it out later and inspect it when it's on the table. Now, the air filter is in pretty rough shape, and there's a fair amount of debris in the pleats. However, it's not wet with fuel or oil, so I think we can get away with good cleaning for right now, but I am going to suggest it be replaced at a later date. So far, I don't see any reason why this thing was being given away, but I didn't have to wait too long to find the issue. When I was trying to see if the engine might be stuck, I realized that the pull rope didn't have any resistance, which means the recoil wasn't engaging the engine. I also noticed that the brake cable seems to be a bit sticky, but it still works. However, it could use some lubrication to make it work a lot better. Continuing with the inspection under the mowing deck, it's surprisingly clean underneath here, but there are a few issues. There seems to be a lot of grass clippings towards the front of the deck, which if not taken care of, could lead to rusting later on. Also, these pulleys are covered in dirt, but they seem to still be working just fine. I'll explain later on why this is a huge concern. There's also a lot of grass clippings towards the back of the deck around the transmission, so we'll see what we can do about that as well. Now to take care of these cables, I'm going to spray some lube into them and work the cables. If left alone, the cables could break, which could cause your mower to be down for a couple days while you wait for new cables. The other reason you want to take care of these is because the cost of cables isn't getting any cheaper, so you want the ones you have to stay working for as long as you can. Now, I'm also going to lubricate the other end of the cable as well, but the upper part is the most important one to take care of. Now, after doing this, the cable is working a lot smoother and should last another season. After that's done, I'm going to take a better look at the grass clippings under the front cover. The cool part is with the Husqvarna badge gone, I can see just how much there is in there, and there's a lot. I almost wonder if there's a mouse or something in here, and this is its home. So the mower is on the table, and I've got the front end up in the air to make it easier to work on the pulleys. I need to clean these to do some maintenance on them, otherwise they could fail. While it's up here, I'm also going to drain the fuel out of the tank so I can examine last year's gasoline. The siphon seems to work better when the mower is on the table because of the height difference between the mower and the bottle. So here's the gasoline from the tank, and to be honest, it still looks pretty good. It is about two shades darker than it should be, but I think we can still use it. Now while I clean these pulleys, I'm going to finally explain why I'm bothering to even do this. In a past video several years ago, I got to work on my first all-wheel drive Husqvarna, and the problem was that the self-propel did not work. What had happened was that one of the pulleys had come apart, and a second pulley was not spinning like it should, so I had to replace the bad pulley and lubricate the second one. Now these pulleys simply do not last under the mowing deck and will eventually need to be replaced, but to keep them working, you can either lubricate them or better yet, repack them with bearing grease. Now I don't have any bearing grease on hand, so I intend on cleaning the pulleys and the bearing seals so I can spray some lube on them. Now the seals prevent dirt from getting to the grease, but I don't find them to be waterproof, so all I do is spray the lube on the seals and it should get inside it. While I have the shop vac out, I'm going to see how much of the grass I can remove from the rear transmission area as well. I'm only using some cheap spray lube on these seals, and that should keep them working for some time. If I get a chance in the future, I would like to take each one of the pulleys off, carefully remove the seal, clean out each one, and then repack them with some new grease, but this will have to do for right now. 
Now I can see the screws that hold the front cover to the mowing deck so I could take them off right now. That way I can clean the grass from under the cover but there's a huge problem. One of the screws is impossible to get to without taking off the front drive line and that's something I do not want to do so I'm not going to bother removing them. Instead I intend on using the hose from the shop vac in the opening. Now this is not the best way to do it but I should be able to get the majority of the grass out of this area. Another way of getting the grass out of this area would be to use a garden hose and to try to spray the grass out. The only issue I have with using water is that it would take quite a bit of water and you might end up with a huge wet mass of grass clippings that you just can't get to. Just when you think you got all of it out, even more clumps show up from out of nowhere. In the future, if I get more time, I would like to remove the front drive to get to the other bolts and do a better job, but for right now, this is going to have to do. While I have the shop back out, I'm also going to use it on the air filter. Like I said earlier, I'm going to clean this one and later on buy a new one, but more than likely, I'm going to order a 5-pack of filters, which will make each one of them only $4.50. The problem is that when you go to your local big box store, they want $10 for just one. If all possible, try finding out if someone you know has a mower that uses the same air filter and have them go in on the purchase of at least a 2-pack. That way, it'll make each filter much cheaper than if you bought a single. I know I've made you wait long enough, but I'm finally going to remove the top cover to get to the recoil. So far, I've spent the last hour cleaning up the dirt and grass on this mower, so this is when I've got to make a choice that will decide if the last hour was unnecessary or well worth it. So here's the recoil assembly, and it's part of the engine cover because it's made from a single piece of molded plastic. There's supposed to be three fasteners that hold it to the engine, but one of them is not the original one, and worse yet, one of them is missing, which is not a good sign. After removing the assembly from the engine, I think I can see what the issue is. Under the recoil pulley is where the pawls are supposed to be located at. They're retained by this guide, which is held in place by a large retaining clip, but the clip and pawls are missing. Now the pulley still spins, but since the clip is gone, it allowed the plate to move, which then allowed the pawls to fall out of the assembly. So the bigger question is, why did the clip come off? I think the missing fastener on the recoil allowed the front of the assembly to move away from the engine, which pushed the pawls against the guide plate, and the force was enough to release the clip. After that, the pawls were lost. Even without a working recoil, we can still test to see if the engine still works, and to do that, I intend on spinning the engine over using the nut holding the flywheel. Now there is a lot of buildup around the nut, so for the socket to fit, we need to clean this area first. Actually, I haven't tried to rotate the engine just yet, just to make sure it's not stuck, and fortunately, it isn't stuck. The next thing I want to do is to inspect the jet on the carb, and if needed, clear any clogs. Now normally, I would remove the carb to do this, but this time, I'm going to do it the easy way. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. Since I'm dealing with the carb and I intend on opening part of it up, I'm going to vacuum up any loose dirt off of it, but I do not intend on getting it spotless. Now once I've gotten all the loose stuff vacuumed up, I'm going to just remove the two screws that hold the bolt to the carb, then remove the bolt to expose only the jet. Once the screws are off, I'm going to pry on the side of the bowl where the outside screw was located at, never pry anywhere else. Now once the bowl is free from the carb, I just need to remove it so I can get to the jet. Now looking in the bowl, I don't see any water or any sort of debris, which is great news. To see the jet, simply lift the float out of the way, and at the bottom of the white post, you'll see a brass insert, which is the jet. In the middle of the insert should be an opening, which you can see is not clogged, but there is a problem. It may not be clogged, but it's also not as open as it should be. That means I'm going to use a small wire to clear any buildup in the jet. After a minute of poking at the brass jet, this is what it looks like. I know it's hard to tell that there's any improvement, so here's a side-by-side -side comparison of it before and after. As you can see, the opening looks to have been closed up with some buildup, which is now gone. Now that the jet is now cleared, it's time to put the bowl back on. So the reason why I decided to not take the carb off the engine like I've done before in the past is pretty simple. Taking off the carb requires you to disconnect the fuel line, which on this engine is not easy. The second reason is that doing it this way means you don't have to worry about any of the linkages on top of the carb, like the auto choke or the governor linkage. That means you don't have to worry about breaking them or installing them incorrectly. The last reason is that I'm pretty lazy, and if I can get away with getting the job done without going through the whole routine, I'm all for it. I think most people would agree with me that if steps 4, 5, and 6 can be bypassed and step 7 is the only real important part, then why not skip them? This is just a lawnmower and not a race car. 
When installing the air filter base, make sure you reconnect the breather hose for the emissions to this port on the base. If you don't, this port will allow the engine to breathe in air that's unfiltered, which could result in the engine wearing out faster than it's supposed to. The last thing is to do is to replace that old air filter and its cover, and then put that old fuel back into the tank. Now to be honest, I just want to see if it'll still run on it. If it doesn't, I'll drain the fuel system and put my own fuel into the tank. Now I don't have a clamp for the brake bar, I just typically use a piece of rope because I can carry it in my pocket, but as you'll see here in a minute, this is going to come back to bite me. So luckily it started, but for some reason it suddenly stopped. What had happened was that the brake handle was able to open because the rope came off due to the vibration. At least I know the engine starts and runs, and even though I didn't get a chance to test the self-propel, I have a really good feeling that it's going to work after looking at the belts and the pulleys. So now I have to try and either find the parts to replace the missing ones from the recoil or just buy another assembly. Now this is when I have to decide if this mower is worth the cost of another recoil or should I just use the mower for parts. With the cost of new mowers going up, I think it's worth it to buy the parts, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to wait for them to arrive in the mail. When they come in, you'll then find out if I bought the missing parts or if it was more economical to just buy the assembly. Another option to buying the parts would be to wait for another free mower to pop up on the marketplace that has the parts I need, but I can't guarantee that I can take them from that parts mower either as I might need them for that one. So my question is, should I buy the recoil assembly or just the parts that I'm missing? If it costs the same for the parts as it does for the whole assembly, I might as well just buy the whole assembly. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.